yeah good evening everyone so before i start can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear whether my screen is visible or not yes for the confirmation so myself i am vijay i hold 13 plus years of experience which includes six plus years of experience in python and sorry hadoop and spark environment okay so as part of today's demo just i am going to cover the following topics i request everyone to please be in mute one second okay i'm just going to cover the following things what is big data Why Hadoop required? Already we have got many technologies available in the market, right? Why again Hadoop? And let me discuss about the current drawbacks. Databases. Drawbacks of databases. Hadoop advantages. Hadoop components. Hadoop job market. Okay. Hadoop and Spark job market, Hadoop advantages, Hadoop components, drawbacks of, but first, what are the drawbacks of the current technologies? Why again we are going for this Hadoop and Spark technologies? Why the current technologies can't they perform? Okay. <clears throat> So if you have got any queries, you can just you can just give your queries. I'll be giving some time at the end of that session. Fine. One second. fine okay what is big data and uh, why hadoop is required first let me discuss what is big data so if we take <clears throat> currently big data the name itself saying huge volumes of data big data is nothing but huge volumes of data currently how the data is getting stored what are the data storage units currently data is stored in the form of kb observe mb GB, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, sotabytes, okay, so on. Zettabytes, sotabytes, so on. So from TB onwards, we say it as big data, right? From TB onwards, we say it as huge data generation. So I've got some couple of queries like, uh, if you have seen KBs of data, MBs of data, or GBs of data, even TBs of data, you should have seen. But do you think like petabytes or exabytes of data is it getting generated in the current real world? If so, examples of petabytes or exabytes of data generation. So I'm saying like big data, huge data generations. Like if you see one petabyte equal to 1024 TBs. Do you think like petabytes or exabytes of data is it getting generated in the current real world? If so, examples of that. I want the sessions to be interactive. Like you can just unmute yourself and you can ask. You can just <clears throat> one second. Uh, take, uh, example of uh, any if you take example of any banking sector if you take the example of any banking sector if you take any bank today like if you see uh, you see a branch for in each every street 
means within a, within a city you can see hundreds of branches for a particular bank within the entire state you can see thousands of branches for a particular bank right in the entire state in the entire country lakhs of branches for a particular bank right so lakhs of branches for a particular bank and millions of customers millions of customers each and every customer each and every customer they perform like a multiple transactions per hour per day per week per month per year each and every transaction need to be stored right so huge data is getting generated right now forget about that banking sector everyone are aware about the social media like facebook in facebook it has got users not only within the country but it has got users throughout the world Me in a minute what is the data generation of the facebook how many posts and videos are getting circulated what should be the storage capacity of facebook it's not in mbs or gps right in tbs or petabytes not only like uh, facebook today if we take uh, today if we take any application generating data it is generating huge data for example <clears throat> i'm sorry if you are taking an application sorry hadoop h a h c h a only it's fine <clears throat> observe this now every application generating data huge data if i take one minute transaction just observe how the data generation in a minute how many fb posts and what is the data generation of facebook in a minute in a minute twitter tweets in a minute what is the data generated by google data generated by google in a minute huge data right everyone creating their own videos and uploading in the youtube youtube videos upload what is the data generated by youtube in a minute what should be the storage capacity for handling all this and millions and trillions of users using email or gmail messages right email or gmail messages so huge data getting generated here we talk about the bank transactions millions and trillions of users making multiple transactions per hour per day per month okay. telecom transactions so if you see everywhere huge data getting generated currently for example if you take e-commerce website like amazon or flipkart so huge data getting generated everywhere right any application generating huge data so if you take on an average and an average if you take like google it is generating more than 600 petabytes per month on an average one petabyte equal to 1024 tbs right but 600 petabytes nothing but 600 into 1024 tbs that is what the data generated and an average so for storing this huge data and for processing this huge data we need to have some tools so for storing this huge data so currently if i say for storing one petabyte of data so currently we have got some databases if you observe we have got some databases like oracle for storing data we have got database like oracle mysql db2 all this, 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 these are the databases used for OLTP, online transactional processing. This database is used for what? Online transactional processing. They can handle GBs of data. But uh, we have got some specialized databases like Teradata, Vertica, Netija. We have got databases like Teradata, Netija, Vertica. They are used for OLAP, data warehouse purpose. They can store terabytes, TBs of data. Okay, But if you take these databases or specialized databases, they can handle data up to some extent. But unlimited data, 
unlimited data storage is not possible by using this databases or specialized databases but for unlimited data for huge data storage for unlimited data storage not only storing and processing the data further we have got a framework called hadoop for storing this huge data or unlimited data storage but before i go with what is hadoop and what are the services provided by hadoop let me show you the data generations currently currently how the data generations different sources of data different types of data before actually i go with what the services of hadoop <clears throat> If you take the data generation from the last 50 years, sir, voice is not clear. Once again, everyone, can you please confirm whether my voice is clear or not? Is this the problem for everyone? No, 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 no. Voice is okay. Voice is okay. Yeah. Sir, okay. It's okay. Okay. Fine. Okay, fine. So you can just check from your side if there is if it is properly connected or not. <clears throat> so if we check, for example, observe this. This is the data. I think this is the data which is available in the current real world. Okay, which got generated from the last 50 years. 1970 to 2020 so if you assume compare this data from the last 40 years and the last 10 years 19 2010 1970 to 2010 it's 40 years of data and compare with the last 10 years 2010 to 2020 Only like 20% of the data got generated from the last 40 years, but 80% of the data has got generated from the last 10 years. 80% of whatever the data from the last 10 years, but previous 40 years, only 10 to 20% of data has got generated. Reasons for huge data generation from the last 10 years, especially. What is the reason for that huge data generation, especially from the last 10 to 15 years? You say because of usage of technology, usage of smartphones, usage of internet. So everything through internet. So everything through online, like online banking, online shopping, online exams, online education, e-learning, online communication, audio video chartings. Okay, online gaming, everything through online. So because of that huge data is getting generated, right? So previously if you take if you see 1990s or if you see in 2000 1990s see that data storage whether you know like you have got floppy disks just the size is 1.44 mb how you used to carry data later you got compact disk later you got dvds usbs but still day by day data is increasing enormously still that storage systems also should be increased right so <clears throat> If you see what are the main sources from where this data is getting generated, what are the main sources from where this data is getting generated? Mainly, I can say three sources from where this data is getting generated. Three sources. Mainly, I can say social data, machine data, and transactional data, I can say transactional data so social data machine data and transactional data social data means the data which got generated from the social websites the data which got generated from the social web, like uh, facebook twitter all this machine data the data which got gen see for example example of machine data for example if you go to any shopping malls for the items you purchased a huge bill is getting generated right so the data which got generated the data which got generated by reading 
the scanners, the barcodes. Such kind of data we called as machine data. Okay, which got generated from machines. Simply saying the data which got generated by reading the barcode scanners. Such kind of data we called as machine data. And uh, transactional data, if we discuss about this transactional data. Mm. Transactional data, nothing but day-to-day -day transactions. Day-to-day, -day trans like bank transactions, telecom transactions, all this. So mainly three sources. And if I discuss about the types, types of data. Types of data. <clears throat> structured data semi structured data and unstructured data Structured data, semi-structured and unstructured data. What do you mean by structured data? The data which is arranged or organized in the form of rows and columns. Such data we call as structured data, which is organized in the form of rows and columns. Examples of structured data like Excel sheets. Database tables semi-structured data means which is not fully structured which is not fully unstructured example of semi-structured data example of semi-structured data like json files xml files all these are not fully structured they are not fully unstructured fine unstructured data there is like uh, articles, chart messages, images, videos, all they comes as unstructured data. <clears throat> okay, structured, semi-structured and unstructured, fine. So these are the types, mainly three types. But if you see in the current, Currently, we need to have the, see the biggest challenge is we need to have the tools which can store all the varieties of data. But if you see the current databases, current databases, they can handle only structured data, right? Semi-structured, unstructured data can't be handled by the databases, like storing this XML files, JSON files, these things. But Hadoop, can handle all the varieties of data, structured, semi-structured, unstructured, not only handling, storing, and processing that huge data in quick time. Okay. So as data is increasing enormously from day to day, so we, are, we need to have proper storage systems for storing and processing the data. So as a solution to all this, we have got a framework, we have got a framework called Hadoop. So we have got a framework called Hadoop, which is meant for two things. Hadoop is mainly meant for two things. For storage and processing. Hadoop is meant for storage and processing. Okay. Generally, if you take any technology, it is meant either for storage or processing. If you take any technology, they are going to perform either storage or processing. For example, if you take uh, like C or C++ or Java or .NET, all this they are used for processing. Or if you take Oracle, MySQL, DB2, Teradata, all this they used for storage. Either they are performing processing or storage, but Hadoop performs both storage and processing. Storage and processing. That too, 
huge storage and huge data processing huge data storage and huge data processing unlimited data storage and unlimited data processing okay fine <clears throat> I've got some couple of queries. Yeah, Python also for meant for processing. <clears throat> okay. So unlimited data storage, unlimited data processing. Okay. I've got some couple of queries here. Fine. <clears throat> so when Hadoop can able to store the data and can process the data, then what is the use of the current technologies? what is the use of the current technologies so whenever hadoop is going to be able to perform both storage and processing means do you mean that the current technologies processing technologies and the storage technologies will go away from the market see my query if hadoop is able to do both storage and processing what is the necessity of all this c c plus plus java dot net python all this and when it is going to store this data then what is the necessity of uh, this databases mysql db2 oracle all this fine so <clears throat> when to go for hadoop when to go for hadoop and when to go for it means hadoop is meant for huge data storage and huge data processing hadoop is not for oltp processing one thing hadoop is not for OLTP processing, Hadoop is for batch processing. Hadoop is for batch processing. Hadoop is not for online transactional processing for day to day activities or for a single record or two records or 10 records. No need of Hadoop. We can go with current database technologies. But Hadoop is meant for millions and trillions of records for storing it and processing it for a single record or for 10 records or for 20 records or kbs or mbs of data not required but for huge data for millions of data millions and trillions of records we we go for hadoop so like if you take uh, if you take the technologies like java in real time we use eclipse Okay, if I'm if I'm providing some GBs or TBs of data or petabytes of data, so it takes huge time. But Hadoop, it is going to process the data in quick time. So just I'll be showing you. I'll just I'll be demonstrating you how exactly the data storage and data processing happens. Why only Hadoop can do that? Hadoop can store unlimited data why not the databases cannot store this unlimited data and why hadoop only can process in very quick time what internally happen internally what exactly happens that's it. but for storing the data for storing the data does hadoop use any database internally for storing the data does hadoop use any database no Hadoop doesn't use any database for storing its data, but it is going with a special kind of file system called as Hadoop distributed file system. Observe carefully, Hadoop doesn't use any database to store its data because databases has got some drawbacks. Despite of those drawbacks, still we are not going with databases for storing its data we are going with a special kind of file system called as hadoop distributed file system and for processing hadoop does hadoop use any processing technologies like this java this thing no hadoop is going with an execution model called as map reduce we have got a execution model called as map reduce Okay, but MapReduce previously, if you see in the year 2014, 15, 16, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, there was a big hype on this MapReduce. But currently in the market, this MapReduce has got outdated. Previously, there was a huge demand for this MapReduce. 
but now it has got out this component has got outdated today instead of that we are replacing this with spark spark so spark is an execution model MapReduce is also ex execution model MapReduce execution model was designed excellently but as compared with spark spark see hadoop hadoop processing speed if you see the hadoop processing speed with any other processing technologies you can just check how the hadoop process just uh, let me so there is a, there is a query asked like uh, um, in oracular teradata we could store and process data is it what are the things indicated by data processing etl load or data business logic calculations yeah <clears throat> extracting transformation and loading or data business logic or calculations okay <clears throat> I'm, I'll come back to your query, yes. So, for processing, we are using MapReduce. Still, we have some of the companies going with MapReduce, but mostly like Spark is preferred today. Very high speed processing, very high speed processing, we can say. Petabytes of data are higher data, huge data. If you want, huge data if you want to store. And if you want to process, Spark can process in minutes or seconds. Very high speed processing, we can say. Spark, okay. So for storing, we are using HDFS and for processing, we are using MapReduce and Spark. MapReduce and Spark are used, okay. So Hadoop providing two services, one is storage and one is processing. Storing the data and processing the data. It does both storing and processing. Okay, now, yeah, some queries were asked like, uh, why only Hadoop can store huge data? Why not the databases? Why only Hadoop can process that data in a very, okay. Let me discuss. So if I take uh, the databases, current databases, First thing, let me discuss the limitations of databases. Observe this. Drawback of databases, first one limited storage unlimited storage is not possible limited storage in gbs or in petabytes in most of the databases no parallel processing is going to in most of the databases no parallel processing is going to happen and if most of the databases if volume increases volume increases speed decreases i'm saying so in most of the databases if volume increases speed decreases for example to just testify this if volume increases speed decreases i'm saying let me take some queries and show you this select see this sql query select sum of amount from sales one select sum of amount from sales one same the same statement i am taking select sum of amount from sales two select sum of amount from sales one select sum of amounts from sales two select sum of amount from sales three three tables i am taking i want the total amount from the sales one sales two and sales three sales one think of that i've got some 10 records I got some 10 records. Here, one lakh records you got. Here, one crore records you got. 
now can you please answer which query is going to execute faster which query is going to execute faster among these three total amount of 10 records or 1 lakh records or 1 crore records which query is going to execute first query is going to execute faster right the total amount of 10 records as compared with 1 lakh records or 1 crore records so from record to from see if it, from query to query as volume increasing speed decreasing right okay the other example series in databases complexity increases if complexity increases speed decreases i'm saying speed decreases if you take a labor example before this for example just try to answer what is three into four Twelve, you say five into nine forty five thirteen into eight what is output one twenty three into seven fifty six six five seven four into nine eight seven six so if you see this uh, human mentality if that uh, complexity increasing speed decreases whenever i say three into four immediately you are saying five into nine you are saying 13 into eight you will, will be able to say but uh, so as complexity increasing speed decreases but uh, a database point of view if i discuss as complexity increases speed decreases let me take some queries and just justify this okay if you observe I'm taking this query select sum of amount from sales just the table name is sales only one table i'm taking sales observe this query which query is going to execute faster now select the average amount from sales select the standard deviation of amount standard deviation of amount from sales same table you are applying the same thing total amount from sales only think that um, same table average amount standard deviation of amount which query is going to execute faster from all these three which query execute faster from all these three total amount from sales average amount standard deviation of amount again this first query execute faster right okay the second query if you take average amount is a two-step process right first sum to be calculated next average to be calculated takes more time as compared with the first query third query if you observe third query lot of internal processing standard deviation is lot of internal processing is required so here query to query complexity increasing speed decreasing right okay the major drawback of databases now see the fifth one the major drawback you see here can handle only structured data databases can handle only structured data okay for example <clears throat> observe this just i'll take one example can handle only structured data i said right for example mm -hmm. I want to take reviews for a particular movie. Reviews. The table name is reviews. And here, if you see, this is the table. User one, user two. So 100 users are giving that feedback or the review. Okay. Then see that column name. User and review now user one saying that movie is good if movie is good saying one if movie is bad saying zero movie is good saying one giving the feedback in the form of ones and zeros assume that movie is good saying one movie is bad saying zero now can you please answer can you count the number of ones and zeros by writing a sql query can you count the number of ones and zeros by writing in SQL query or not? Count aggregation in database in SQL. You have got count aggregation, right? Now, can you please say 
select hmm. single grouping single aggregation we say review wise review wise count star i want count from which table reviews table select review comma count star from reviews group by group by review select a review review as count i want from reviews table group by review so if you see the output uh, review wise means reviews one and zero count think that one 90 people saying the movie is good and 10 people saying the movie is bad so this is the output you got so 90 people saying movie 10 people saying movie is bad but generally if you take real-time scenarios like uh, generally they won't give reviews like ones and zeros right they will give that feedback in their own text format so first first person saying like movie is good second person saying movie is not good third person saying a uh, movie story is not good so whatever it is they are giving in their own text format now now can you write an sql query to count the number of goods and number of not goods can you write an sql query for this kind of data previously the data is structured in the form of ones and zeros but here people saying in their own text format now can you write an sql query to say that number of goods and number of bats so even if you are count just even if you are count if just like uh, keyword count like good 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 how many goods but it gives wrong computation where even not good also has got good right so it gets wrong computation so this kind of data can't be handled this kind of data can't be handled by using this databases so just i was so i was saying the drawbacks of databases as compared to hadoop only once again as compared to hadoop but databases will be there will be running in the market but even if you see in the coming days, we are going to see NoSQL databases. NoSQL databases rather than databases. NoSQL databases today, if you see in the current market, has got great demand as compared with NoSQL database. Sorry. As compared to databases, we have got NoSQL databases. The next generation databases we can say as NoSQL databases. Schema list behavior, random access. So in NoSQL databases, record to record a different number of fields can be maintained my first record can have three fields second record can have five fields third record can have 10 fields but in the case of database sql like oracle from first record to last record same number of fields can be maintained right but here record to record different number of fields we have got many no sql databases like uh, if you are, they are categorized into many types like key value store document store graph store key value store, columnar store, document store, graph store. We have got many NoSQL databases like that. Cassandra, HBase, MongoDB, CouchDB, React, Peanut, many NoSQL databases. Okay, fine. As part of our course, I'm going to discuss on NoSQL databases. So as part, as a Hadoop and Spark developer, you need to have the knowledge of at least one NoSQL database. <clears throat> So these are the drawbacks of databases. Despite of these drawbacks, still Hadoop doesn't use these databases for storing its data. Rather, it is going with a special kind of file system called as Hadoop Distributed File System. So there are a lot of things you need to observe. Why only Hadoop can store huge data or unlimited data? How this Hadoop Distributed File System? What exactly? How exactly Hadoop is able to store the data? and observe this just i'll give like a once let me check before i go with advantages of hadoop before i discuss advantages of hadoop let me discuss to understand the advantage of hadoop first you need to know the architecture of hadoop but just as of now, I'm just going to give an overview of this 
architecture but in brief we'll be discussing later but hadoop follows master and slave architecture hadoop follows single master multiple slaves master and slave architecture it won't follow client server architecture single master multiple slaves like this single master and multiple slaves architecture this we call it as master node okay this we call it as slave nodes master node or we call it as in hadoop terminology we call it as name node slave nodes are data nodes we say data nodes observe this data nodes why we call them as data nodes means in hadoop data stored by the slaves data processed by the slaves just i'll give a quick example like how exactly data stored and processed but later i'll give in brief i'll discuss in brief how exactly what happens internally in hadoop data is stored in the form of files think that i got this 1tb 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 but think this this file size is like 3tb can this 3db file can it fit into any of the slave s1 or s2 or s3 not not possible right so it cannot fit into s1 or s2 or s3 so in hadoop you are just going to split it you are going to split the data into blocks blocks you are going to split the data into blocks each block stored in one slave each day each block stored on the blocks data is going to be split into multiple blocks the blocks are going to get distributed across the slaves the blocks are going to get distributed across the slaves that's why here data is getting distributed across the slaves hadoop distributed file system data is getting distributed across multiple slaves think that 3 db means think that here you got some 30 lakh records assume here 10 lakh records in this 10 lakh records in this 10 lakh records are stored assume means data distributed across multiple slaves and data processed by multiple slaves parallelly here only three have taken think that if you have got like 30 slaves data distributed across 30 slaves data processed by 30 slaves parallelly so that uh, data is executed by 30 machines parallelly more speed so work done by a single slave and work done by 30 slaves see the difference between the speed work done by a single person work done by 30 persons parallelly see that difference between the speed okay the same here also parallel processing 30 systems running parallelly and executing a single job that is single what is data file and data is getting distributed see if your data is increasing your slaves will be increased for example today if i am running a business with only 10 slaves 10 systems but your data has increased branches have increased then you need to increase your number of slaves okay that's what <clears throat> now coming to this uh, i just discussed like uh, uh, drawbacks of databases right now coming to the hadoop advantages hadoop advantages first one unlimited data storage what is that unlimited data storage unlimited data storage because of a feature because of a feature horizontally unlimited scalability there is a feature horizontally unlimited scalability okay horizontally unlimited scalability what do you mean by horizontally unlimited scalability means observe this horizontally you can keep on adding the slaves unlimited number of slaves can be keep on adding there is no limit on the number of slaves you are going to add in Hadoop. You can keep on adding the slaves. If the num data is increasing, and if that uh, customers are increased, if branches are increased, if data is increased, the number of slaves also should be increased. If data increased by 100 times and customers increased by 1000 times, 
you cannot go with the same number of slaves you go you will be increasing the number of slaves so the data is going to get distributed across the slaves and processed by multiple slaves parallelly right horizontally unlimited scalability and second advantage hadoop advantage is very high speed processing very high speed processing very high speed processing because of parallel processing because of parallel processing a label ex first let me give a labor example what is this parallel processing most of the databases doesn't follow this parallel processing for example let me give an example of parallel and non parallel parallel and non parallel okay parallel processing for example one person preparing one item takes one minute if same one person preparing 10 items how much time 10 minutes right one person preparing 100 items takes 100 minutes see but in the sorry this is non parallel this is non parallel and this is what parallel in non parallel one person preparing 100 items 100 minutes but in the case of parallel one item takes one minute 10 items also takes one minute 100 items also takes one minute means here 10 persons working parallelly preparing 10 items here 100 persons working parallelly creating 100 items one minute means here we are saying like uh, items but in our terminology systems 100 systems running here 10 systems running parallelly so here in parallel processing the speed is not going to decrease that is what parallel very high speed processing you are going to see in hard one can handle all varieties of can handle all varieties of data all varieties of data structured unstructured and semi-structured and hadoop is an open source hadoop is an open source no licensing required fast cutting and hadoop uses commodity hardware means it doesn't mean that we need to have the latest configuration high configure commodity hardware any hardware okay so let me discuss about this first two mainly this first two features unlimited data storage very high speed processing just one second okay how do put advantages unlimited data storage very high speed processing can handle all varieties of data open source no licensing required so most of the hadoop components just we are going to download from uh, apache mirrors website so i'll just show you how we can download and how to configure those things from apache mirrors website all our apache products hadoop products are apache products commodity hardware so high configuration is not required so let let me give some examples so a lot of um, tests were done on how to be any technology coming into the market a lot of tests will be done on that so unlimited data storage but very high speed processing let me give example on very high speed processing yahoo yahoo has conducted a test to check the speed of various databases in the market it has taken a table it has just taken a table of size 100 TB. It has taken a table of 100 TB consisting of 1024 columns. So the task is sorting, sorting based on 16 columns, sorting based on 16, not on a single column, but sorting based on 16 columns. 
this is an example yahoo has conducted a test to check the speed of all the databases in the market so what is the time taken by the various databases oracle has taken nearly 3.5 days to process it has taken 3.5 days mysql it has taken six days to process it teradata is there right specialized database used for data warehouse purpose it has just taken 4.5 hours 4.5 hours netija another specialized database used for data warehouse purpose it has just taken 3 hours finally if you see hadoop finally if you see hadoop it has just taken 3.4 minutes see the speed of the other data technologies and how do it has taken days and hours but it has taken minutes of time the latest version of hadoop the latest version of hadoop has just taken 1.2 minutes but one thing if you are using map reduce okay in hadoop but if i use a spark spark if you see it's 100 times faster than hadoop spark is 100 times faster than hadoop that's why spark has got great demand in today's market 100 times faster than hadoop just we are discussing both hadoop and spark combinedly hadoop for unlimited data storage spark for high speed processing both combined it together used in the market for storing and processing huge data hadoop hdfs we use spark for the executions spark is a in memory computing in memory computing system we say in memory computation is data gets stored within the memory and data gets processed within that memory generally data will be stored in the disk right but in spark data gets stored in the memory in the ram and data gets processed in the ram ram level storage ram level processing that's why we see great room for spark very high speed very high speed 100 times faster than hadoop i said so that's we discussed like Hadoop and Spark. So um, <clears throat> I was just discussing what is big data, how this data is getting generated, types of data, sources of data from where it is getting generated, why Hadoop, what are the services Hadoop, drawback of databases, why databases are not taken as a backend for storing Hadoop data, Hadoop advantages. I was just briefing you and uh, Hadoop components. Okay, I'll be just, uh, it takes time one by one Hadoop components. Just, I'll be briefing you in that tomorrow session. What are the Hadoop? Okay, otherwise, just within a minute or two, I just I'll brief you what are the components I'm going to discuss now. The entire course Hadoop job market, okay, Hadoop and Spark job market. Wherever we see this um, previously, wherever you see like. <clears throat> ETL kinds of projects, the, all the projects are getting migrating towards Hadoop and Viron, Hadoop and Spark and environment. Wherever you see huge data, okay, so there is a requirement of Hadoop and Spark. So what I'm going to discuss as part of the course, let me say what I'm going to discuss as part of this course. One second. Hadoop with Hadoop and Spark. See here. Introduction What is big data? Hadoop need for Hadoop sources, types, database. Hadoop distributed. Next, my discussion will be on Hadoop distributed file systems, map produce. So, map produce, I'll be, I'll be giving knowledge on map produce execution model also. So, for comparing map produce and Spark, you need to have the knowledge on this map produce. Even some queries will arise from map produce also in the interviews. That's why I'll be discussing some map produce also up to that time. Scoop. Scoop means SQL for and Hadoop for import and export operations for importing data from Hadoop to databases, database to Hadoop. Okay. So that Scoop component in brief we are going to discuss. Yarn, yet another resource negotiator. Before the Hadoop versions, so zero version, one version, we have got some drawbacks. All that are rectified from Hadoop to version onwards. We call them as Yarn, yet another resource negotiator. And pick. We, we can write big scripts. It's a simple scripting language. 
uh, where this 100 lines of Java code we can write within six lines in PIC. That's the easiness of PIC. 100 lines of Java code I can write within five to six lines in PIC. That is what the easiness of PIC scripting. So how can we process the data? It's a processing component. Okay, and in depth of in the depth of PIC. So here all the uh, relational operators in PIC and uh, PIC in depth diagnostic operators in PIC and eval functions in PIC. Next is Hive. Hive is also a very important component. Hive is a component which is used in each and every project. It's a kind of data warehouse kind of environment in Hadoop framework. So where you can perform some kind of querying. We are going to make the data structured and perform querying and you are going to create tables, Hive tables, internal and external tables and performing querying on that. And no SQL database. I'm just going to have one note. What is NoSQL? Different types of NoSQL databases, their types, and the, especially for Hadoop, we have got a NoSQL database called HBase. HBase is only for Hadoop. HBase works only for Hadoop. Okay, one second. Next, coming to this Scala. Scala. So before I go with Spark, I'm going to discuss about Scala. Spark is an execution model implemented by using Scala language and Python language. Spark is an execution model implemented by a language. We require a language like Scala or Python. So mostly like Scala is used, even Python is also used for kind of machine learning kinds of applications. So I so generally I deal batches for Spark with Scala and Spark with Python. Pi Spark batches also I'll be taking. But generally in the US market mostly like PySpark is preferred spark with python PySpark. so i deal both <clears throat> i implement spark using three languages like the scala python and our language also but mostly scala is used and next python is used so first i am going to discuss about scala language its functional behavior Later, I'll come back to this Spark Core implementation. Spark Core production to the Spark and this RTD. Everything in brief how Spark compared with Sage, how Spark with HANA, Spark with MapReduce, Spark with Flick, Spark with, with comparison of Spark with any other technologies in the market. I'm just first going to compare it. What advantage you are going to see with Spark? Later, I'll come to this Spark data objects like RTD, resilient distributed data sets. DAG, directed acyclic graph, RTD computation, what are the steps involved, persistence options, persistence features with multiple examples I'm going to discuss. See the various persistence options, where spark core computations, fault tolerance, the aggregations, groupings, everything okay, I'm going to discuss. And what are the various actions and transformations you are going to see within this. And later, Spark SQL, how to work with Spark SQL and the SQL kind of querying, how can we can do perform using this in depth in brief. What are the data frames, data frames concepts in this, data sets working with SQL operations, and Spark and Hive integration, Spark and MySQL integration working with CSV files, JSON files, and many other file formats working with those and deploying modes. I'm going to show you how to work in local mode, cluster mode, that is standalone. And uh, Spark applications uh, creation using what are the various stages and task driver and executor and uh, submitting the Spark job. Submitting the Spark job, how to submit a Spark job. And I'm going to show you how to run this within this IDs like Eclipse IDE, I'm going to show you, and IntelliJ IDE, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you in build tools like uh, SBT simple build tool and Maven build tool. Okay, I'm going to how to launch the Spark application and also. I also give knowledge with Spark and one other NoSQL database like Spark and Cassandra. Apart from this, I'm going to discuss some other new version related topics. Okay. This is these are the things I'm going to cover in brief. I'm going to spend 80 hours for this. So in depth, I'm going to discuss with many examples, real time tasks and scenarios, 80 hours means I won't take more than like uh, two months. Means uh, uh, if I take, I will be taking some bigger sessions uh, sometimes on surface. 82 means sometimes close to 80 to 100 hours for completing these things, all this. Okay. If you've got any queries, I'm going to give you the clear notes for each and every topic. I'm just going to type, I all, 
have got slides i can keep a ppt slide it won't look that much effective in discussing i'm just going to type and show you all the things explain you and i want the sessions to be interactive lot not, not me speaking but uh, whatever i type whatever if you once we go to the practicals okay even there are things where i i will be asking you to just work along with me do along with me wherever there are some installations are there wherever uh, when whenever we want to open that hive environment pig environment spark environment i will ask you to log in and how to work and where to type where to how to execute all these things parallelly you can do along with me i'm going to do step by step process step by step how to do those things and uh, i'm going to give you that software wise don't worry about the software i'm going to give that a software i'm going to demonstrate i will take a separate session for that software <clears throat> coding see coding wise i'm not going to bring any code and just uh, i'll be just typing each and everything that's why i'm saying 80 hours i'm just going to type everything i'm not going to bring any pre-written code and just explaining that things everything statement by statement i will type and show you that in spark and scala scala language is used totally the coding goes in scala in the case of Hadoop, uh, we have got some commands and in the pig we have got pig scripting that language will in high we have got hql language a high query language which is similar to sql language those two things and apart from that uh, scoop how this import export operation happens and in uh, so yeah anyhow yeah i'm going to cover the spark and scala in depth i'm saying like 100 hours i'm saying 80 to 100 hours i'm saying but i won't cross like two to end of months i'm going to complete it i'll be taking some bigger sessions like three three hours. if i want to discuss more examples and if i want to type and show you you need to spend more time for that and i want the sessions to be interactive i'll just keep you in unmuted state and you can just unmute yourself and you can ask queries anytime and the sessions i want the sessions to be interactive means you should keep answering through wise not through short panel in the coming sessions when i enter into the practical part so that depending upon your response the speed of the session goes how fast you are responding in the same manner my speed the session speed will be if you are responding slowly then i need to spend more hours then if you're spending if you're responding fast means okay fine any other what is the system requirement to perform the practicals there is a, see uh, the thing is most of them asking the same query like uh, system i'm going to just i'm just going to provide you the software which can run on any systems you can just do the practicals in any systems but if the ram capacity is like 8 gb or 16 gb it works faster it can work faster means you are going to get the result faster but if you have got less 8 gb less than 8 slowly you will be getting the result but it little slow okay that's the only thing but i'm not saying that it can't be installed like that it will be installed in all the your systems there is no specific requirement but if it is 8 gb ram is there or more than 8 gb ram so it works a little bit faster okay you can install this hadoop and spark in all this and even if you want to get more speed directly installing all this on linux environment directly it works works more faster so monday to friday you will be having the classes sometimes after some days if i'm going i'm running out of days if i feel it is taking more i'll keep uh, some bigger sessions on saturdays later so whenever we see some bigger uh, applications like so just i'm going to take bigger sessions previously the usage of java was more in hadoop when we are using MapReduce execution model MapReduce execution mostly everything happens using java language but the totally because of that especially i can say the drawback of it is used lot of programming knowledge required so that map is outdated i'm saying now we are going with spark with scala implementation spark can also be implemented using java also but not used only one company using spark with java value labs Comp the company value labs is using spark with java remaining all are using spark with scala implementation 
so yes uh, nitish yeah those who are not aware about linux also like uh, for two days just i am going to brief you about all those commands it's not a big all one line commands are there if you are practicing those much i'm not i'm not saying that you need to have the total knowledge on linux or in-depth knowledge of linux basic linux commands are enough i'll be giving the knowledge on that all the comments one by one comments how we are going to do okay total in-depth knowledge is not required the basic comments of okay fine any other any other queries from your side okay uh, can you can you please one of you can you please unmute yourself in one second One of you, can you unmute yourself and can you speak through voice? Let me check. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, you are audible, yes. So I want yeah. you people to just, uh, in the coming sessions, I want you people to just communicate through voice. Not a problem. If you, yeah. that means uh, what, for every statement I type, you are supposed to give the response, whether the answer is correct or wrong. If that response is good, then I can. Yeah, the yeah session, sure. session will be much more, much active if you are responding through voice. Short panel means me seeing sometimes I may see, I may not see that response. It's time taking. Okay, okay. related to the fees, you can just, okay. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, audible. Are you, have you got any queries? Yes, sir. What will be the session time, sir? Session timing will be six to seven daily. Okay. Is there any chances to change the session time? Okay. No, sir, I'm knowledge on basic planning. Actually, session I have time. to log in from 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. So that's why I'm asking. Okay. Session time is 6 o'clock will be fine. Right? Yes, sir. From 6. After 6.30, I will be free. Okay. Yes, sir. Because my working hours is 9.30 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. So just for one week, we'll be, one week you can attend, later I can change it. Okay. Thank you. For when you can adjust, then later I can change the time. It's as of now, why? Because we have already given the timing, right? Just mention it. One week we can, what is the system requirement? Okay. Yes, you can ask your queries through voice also, not instead of typing, it's a time taking, right? Timings will be the same typing as of now, but uh, later if everyone, uh, I'll just ask uh, everyone of you, if everyone are flexible with any timing, then I can, we can have the flexible timing also. So regarding the fees, uh, okay, you can contact this Durpa soft. Okay, tomorrow they'll provide you that contact details. Tomorrow also, everyone who can attend tomorrow, day after tomorrow, you can attend, you can see more knowledge on this Hadoop. You can just check how the sessions goes. Everyone, tomorrow also, you can log in at the same time with that same link to get more knowledge on this Hadoop. Okay. Yes, there is, as of now, there is no pre everything I'm going to show you. Before I go with this actual practical part, I'm going to see what all the prerequisite required. I'm just going to brush up. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I just want to know, like, after this course, uh, do you have any uh, data pipeline which we will create in this course after that, so that we can propagate that it into our resume as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's not a, it's not a problem. I'll just show you those things. And, uh, Apart from this, uh, what I suggest to people is whatever we discuss the practicals, either you do parallel along with me, but parallelly, otherwise to do that day itself, you need to complete the practicals that is so that the next day you can understand much. So if you are doing the first two days of practicals of any component, then you are going to use the response in the coming in our sessions. So if you are giving response in the sessions, means you are practicing the Okay, fine. Uh, then that uh, sessions will be going. So you can understand all the sessions in a flexible manner. And if you're practicing, not like a, in a week time or in a two weeks, 
we are doing the practical. So one, I, what I suggest is every day, every day, at least spend some one or two hours time for your practicals. Okay. Everything, so everything is practical oriented, nothing theoretical. Just uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to type everything and showing you. Not, I'm not going to bring any data and show you. I can show you with a colorful like PPT presentation. I can show you some data, and, but I'll everything I'll be typing and showing you all this. Okay, fine. Okay. So still, okay, if I'm done with the queries, if there are no other queries, so we can, can we watch the recorded video again in the case we missed the class? Yes, every session is a video recorded, but not downloaded, download access won't be given, but the only thing is you can view it. It will be forwarded to your Google Drive. You can just view it. If you are, if you are missing because of some office time, because of some health, if you have missed some couple of sessions, so if you have got any background noise, you can just give a response through chart panel, everyone. So I kept in mute everyone. I'm getting some sound from you. Okay, fine. If you have missed any sessions, then you can go through the video and you can come back and you can understand the If you have got any queries at the start of the session, so you can ask your queries. Even if you have got any errors while practicing, you can just take the snap of it and you can just keep in the group. A group will be created. In that group, you can just keep your pick. Okay, fine. So, if there are no other queries, if I'm done with the queries, I'll just sign off for today. Meet you tomorrow, same time with the same link. Still, if you have got any queries, you can ask me at the start of the session tomorrow. Okay, even tomorrow, day after tomorrow, you can attend the sessions for more knowledge on this. So I'm stopping here. Thank you for your time. Thank you all.